As a former player yourself, what are your thoughts on what we heard right off the top there, Kyrie Irving and Dwight Howard saying? Well, I mean, there's, like what was said, Greeny, there's a lot to decipher going into this decision between the pandemic, economic loss, and then social justice. As it relates just to the social justice piece, you know, Kyrie Irving, Lou Williams, Steven Jackson, they are all my brothers. Uh, we are all in the same fight. But I would vehemently disagree with them as it relates to the stand that they're taking here. There, there is a, a major wealth gap in our country, and this comes down to economics as well, between African Americans and Caucasian people. So the, the, the question is, the one vehicle, and there's multiple vehicles, but the vehicle that we're talking about now in the NBA is the vehicle that has allowed us to ascend from a wealth perspective that can put us into a position to make change, to deploy resources. If you choose not to play, if you go down that path, there will be economic repercussions for that decision. Now, I understand fans from the outside say, well, that's worth doing. But my question is, what are you asking for? And if other sports leagues decide to move forward and play and the NBA decides not to play, then voices other than LeBron James or Kevin Durant, uh, you know, those voices will be diminished to a degree because other sports leagues will be at front and center. So I, the, the question is, by not playing, what are you getting in return? What are you asking for? Are you asking for more diversity within, you know, coaches, general manager positions, ownership positions? I think you can still have that conversation with Adam Silver, considering how reasonable and practical he is, and still get those things and still play. And, and still have that two-month window where you're able to utilize your voice every single day to push for change, for social reform, for you know whatever the issues that are being addressed here. So, look, and it's easier for Kyrie and these guys to say that Kyrie's making thirty plus million dollars this year. Lou Will's made a lot of money. Dwight Howard's made a lot of money, but there still is that next wave of young players predominantly being African-American, that if you lose out on next season, the CBA is going to be up, the players can lose out on $1 billion worth of salary, and that stops the trajectory of a lot of African-Americans earning more in order to deploy those resources back to social reform, Greeny. Jackie Mack, I know you spent a lot of this weekend talking to people. What were you hearing? So it's interesting, Greeny and Jay, you're so dead on with the the things that these young players are grappling with, there's a lot of self-reflection going on, a lot of self-examination. On the one hand, I think most of these young players understand this is an unprecedented time in our country and an unprecedented time in, the, in their careers where they have a chance to really affect social change. So then the question becomes, how do we do that? And I think many of them do feel, wow, if we stop the NBA season, is that a really powerful message? So that's in one ear. In the other ear, is your family saying, you, we can't go without another season without any income, and who knows what, how that bleeds into next year. You have your agents. It's their job to explain to you the financial ramifications of that. But then it comes down to young players and some veterans. I talked to one veteran who said to, said to me over the weekend, I have been marching. I have been using social media. I am all in on this movement. I believe we could use our league on national television as a vehicle to get our message across in ways we could never do if the season was canceled, in keeping with Adrian and Ramona's piece. Think about this, Greeny and Jay and Adrian. What if a whole team, right before the game starts, kneels before the national anthem? Wouldn't that be a powerful statement? These are some of the things these players are grappling with. It's not an easy step for them, but I do feel in the end they're going to go ahead and play. Now, that was going to be my last question. Do you have any sense that the restart, such as it is, is in jeopardy based upon these things? Jackie? I think jeopardy is a strong word. I think it's in the conversation, but I do think ultimately, as a group, they're going to go forward and play. Jay, is, is that the sense you're getting from the people you're talking to as well? I do. I, I, it's going to be tough because there is a pandemic that we're still in the midst of that it seems like we, we've forgotten about uh, throughout a lot of these things that forgotten are happening. About. But at the end of the day, I, I'm kind of with Patrick Beverly on this one. And, uh, you know, a lot of people on social media were talking about whether that was a jab at LeBron or not. But, uh, you know, LeBron is leading a pretty powerful movement. And uh, if LeBron and company say they're going to play, they're going to play. We will. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.